All right, in this video, we're going to say to find the equation of a plane uh, and get the equation of a plane from various types of information. Um, this methodology tries to help you out depending on what you have. Um, and the example we're looking at here, uh, we know that the plane contains the line x equals t, y equals 1 plus 2t, z equals negative 1 plus t, and it complains the, contains the point 1, 4, 3. Um, so uh, step one is to state a point on the plane. Um, so you might be given that, like we are, and it's easy, but you might have to find it from a line or something like that. Um, so we're just going to use the point we have right there. Uh, we'll call that point P. Uh, and I have a note there about if you're just given two line equations. All right, and step two, we're going to find a vector in the plane. So uh, we will use the, uh, say if given the line equation, then use uh, the vector components from that. We will do that. We've got our line here. And so remember the vector components are the coefficients of the variable terms in the parametric equations. Um, they're the denominators in the symmetric equations. And so we'll call this vector u, and it's 1, 2, 1, right? t, 2t, two, 1t. Two, so just the coefficients from that. Um, we need a second vector in the plane. And so uh, it says a note right here, if you're given a point and a line, then find a vector from the line to the point. Um, and that's what we will do. So for that, we'll use a point on the line. Uh, you can also get that from the You can also get that from the equation of the line um, using the constant terms, right? And so that'll give us our point Q. There's no constant term in that first um, equation, so we use zero, and then the one, and then the negative one. Right? That's a point on the line. You can pick any value of t. This is letting t equal zero, right? Um, and then we want a, another vector, we're going to call it V, and it will go from the point P to the point Q. We just subtract the components to get that. So uh, use the, oh, it looks like I did it the other way. Let me switch it. I don't think it matters which way you do it, but I want to match up with my notes. So um, we'll find a vector from the line to the point, um, which would be going from Q to P. So each of the components will take the component of, or the coordinate of P minus the coordinate of Q. So one minus zero, right? And then for the second coordinates, four minus one, and then last is three minus negative one. Right. And that vector will be one negative, sorry, one positive three, one, three, and four. I think that's step three. All right, so now we will take the two vectors, u and v, and 
and we will take their cross product. The cross product, remember U and B are both vectors in the plane, and so their cross product should be the normal vector to the plane, which is what we use to get the equation of the plane. So we'll use the matrix. Well, we've done this quite a bit now, so we won't go in details, um, but uh, there's a video on finding the cross product, another video where we kind of go into using find the distance from a point to a line, we show a little more about the cross product. So at this point, we should be comfortable with it. Um, one, two, one here, and one, three, four there. Though I do need a little more room. Oops. Uh, and so for I, we'd have eight minus three. And for J, we'd have four minus one, uh, but negative. And for K, we'd have three minus two. So five, uh, negative three and one, that's our normal vector. And to write out the equation of the plane, you just need the normal vector and the point. We had the point from step one, because uh, we were given a point from the beginning. Um, and then there's our normal vector. And so we just put it all together. So those components of the normal vector go outside the parentheses, and then you subtract the components of the coordinates of the point from x, y, and z. Um, remember, p was one, four, three. So five from the normal vector, uh, and then x minus one from p, and then minus three, y minus four, plus one, z minus three, and then you just set it equal to zero. Uh, all right, and you can simplify like dropping the one. So now all that's left is to validate this. Uh, and for the validation, it says to check each piece of the given information. So if you have points to check, you would just substitute the coordinates of those points into the equation. Um, that might seem trivial here, but sometimes you're given like three points and it's not obvious. So uh, we'll just show how that works. We had one point that was supposed to be on this plane, and so we would put the coordinates in there for x, y, and z, and then that will, of course, give us zero. To check a line, what you want to do is solve for x, y, and z in terms of t, and then put that in. Um, so we were given a line, x equals t, y equals 1 plus 2t, c equals negative 1 plus t. Those were our uh, line equations from the beginning. And we'll just put that into the same equation of the plane. So x is replaced with t, and y is replaced with 1 plus 2t, and z is replaced with negative 1 plus t. Um, this might seem like it's a function of t, but it should, in fact, simplify to zero for all values of t. If you simplify, you get 5t minus 6t plus t, which is zero. So you can check lines or points, and that's usually what you're given. Um, if you're given vectors, then use the line that's parallel to the vector. Um, and And then we can graph the whole thing. So let's do the graphing validation. We'll use GeoGebra for that. 
Um, it's a little tricky to put in a line. You need to put in the symmetric version of the line. So we'll just kind of review that. You'd want to solve for t with each of these. That the first one's already solve for t. But that would be y minus one over two, and then that would be z plus one, and then you set those equal to each other, right? Those are all equal to c. So that's what we use when we put a line into GeoGebra. And then we need to call it something. So use a lowercase f, that's the name of the line, colon, parentheses, and then put in your symmetric equations. Sorry. So x equals y minus 1 over 2 equals z plus 1. And you see, it'll draw that line for us. We'll change the color. Right, and then let's put in our point P. Um, and then you can have GeoGebra find the uh, equation of the plane, or no, the, you can have Pedro draw the plane. Um, you go to tools, and then you should see plane there, and it'll say select three points, or a point in a line, or two lines. Um, so we have a point in a line, so we'd grab a point and the line, and it should draw the plane for us. Oh, and it gives us the equation there as well. You can make sure that the point and the line are both on the plane. Um, but I like to put in the equation that we found, um, which was five times x minus one minus 3 times y minus 4 plus 1 times z minus 3 is 0. And it'll get kind of weird when you have two planes that are exactly on top of each other. So you can do it. And kind of toggle them on and off and make sure they are, in fact, the same. All right, so that validates that we have the correct plane, and we have now found the equation of the plane for this problem.